That evening, though, you know, I left my media DNA all over the country because I told people repeatedly that Donald Trump was going to win the presidency. Eh? How did I know that? You know, I went through a lot. I'm a steward and a guardian of the story that is discussed it's in See Something, Say Nothing. But it came at a great price. So I have to maintain my own personal integrity in order to maintain the integrity of the story, which, by the way, is still in process. None of the issues or the cases that I discuss in the book have been resolved to this very day. But it's my intention to remedy that. And I, those of you, all of you, believe in prayer, do pray for us, me and my wife, because uh, we intend to see this through to the end. It has to be resolved. But the anthem that we sang tonight starts out with a question. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? It's a question. The people of Baltimore were up on the tops of the houses watching the battle between the British fleet and the soldiers at Fort McHenry, McHenry. I didn't know that on the flanks of the fort were a battery of 20,000 pound cannons and that in front of it defending the fort was a battery of 50,000 pound cannons that are so big that you could literally stick your head in them, which I did just to see if I could do it. <laughs> so it was a stalemate. Neither side actually won or lost. But the people on the roofs of the houses were watching in a driving rain to see the outcome. And they were wondering, I believe, the same thing that Americans were wondering on the eve of the election, which in central time at 0240 in the morning, almost in an anticlimactic way, Pennsylvania has gone to Trump. And a lot of the people that went to sleep and didn't see that announcement were wondering in the morning whether they would see the flag. Isn't that true? Or at least which flag it might be that was waving. And I believe it was high fives, fist bumps, and hallelujahs when we discovered that she was still waving. I've also discovered going through the trauma of nearly 12 years of nonstop investigations by my own colleagues and my own government that I took a pledge to defend, that um, it's easy to be distracted, even at this point. We talk a lot about the nature of the threat we face, but we should also not forget to ask, what are we fighting for? You might even put it in a different perspective. So what are we fighting for? Yeah, we have a lot of threats that we can describe in detail. But what we are fighting for is the Constitution and the principles that this government was founded on. The Constitution is the protector of our country more thoroughly and more completely than any wall that could possibly be built. Yes. The wall along the border could help if it's built correctly and if it's managed and monitored correctly. But the true wall around our country is the Constitution. And I would like to call for a constitutional revival <laughs> so that we really know the values that we live by, those freedoms and liberties that our Creator endowed us with. And by the way, to echo our, the rabbi vis-a-vis -vis Israel, I'd like to also add a prayer. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim, Yishlayu o Havaich. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love thee. And I believe that applies to now. <laughs> our country is like a sponge floating in the water. There's lots of other sponges, other countries floating in the water too. 
We can't be taken out of the water because that's the world that we live in. And what I call saturation, and that is the attempt of the progressive leftists and their nihilistic allies called the global Islamic movement are seeking to alter or abolish the current form of government that we live under. Ironically, exactly what it says in the Declaration of Independence. And that sponge floating in the water will become saturated with water, won't it? To the point where it's basically completely submerged. And then there are forces who want to push from the top and accelerate that saturation process. So what, since we can't move the sponge out of the water, insulates us, makes us waterproof from being saturated by the things that would destroy us. What is that insulating power that keeps us from being saturated? The Constitution. That's what protects us, friends. So that's what I'm standing up for, and that's what I intend to continue fighting for because I took a vow to protect our country from threat, both foreign and domestic. And even though I'm now currently retired from federal law enforcement, my vow is still active duty. And it, I follow my vow wherever it leads me. And tonight, my friends, has led me to stand in front of you. So I'm greatly honored to be the inaugural recipient, and I hope that I be, will be an example of those who come after me, that it will be a coveted prize simply for the sake of standing up and defending the liberties that our Creator endowed us with. Thank you very much.